Okay, um, good evening everybody and welcome to our Microsoft uh, Teams live event, which is a public information meeting regarding Educate Together's application for patronage of the new post-primary school opening in Gorey in 2021. Uh, my name is Jeremy Kevin, I'm a new schools officer with Educate Together. Um, and speaking tonight, uh, we have Colin Kyo, who's principal of Wicklow Educate Together Secondary School. Uh, Sarah, who's a, an Educate Together Secondary School student. Uh, Joanna Grady, who's the parent, uh, who's involved in the parent led campaign group. Um, so this is, we're just going to kick off with a little video that we have. So so just uh, so just watch this video. This is give you a little bit of a flavour of what's happening in our Educate Together uh, post primary schools. <laughs> I love the inclusivity. So, so many people of different ethnicities and all that, the religions, all that kind of thing, to colour their skin, it doesn't matter. First name basis is really important for building relationships with students. It takes down that barrier. And so if we have good relationships with our students, they can learn better with us and from us. I really like having the first name terms. I feel that it, to me, it kind of builds a stronger bond between teachers and students and because it doesn't feel like there's that much of a gap between you, you feel like everyone's on like an equal level. All students have um, an opportunity to excel. Everybody achieves their best and will always achieve some form of success in the school. Since we're all like practically like a family in the school, it's important for like everyone to be equal. I believe it's really doing something differently in the second level system in Ireland, particularly around inclusion and equality, which are really key to the model. By having ethics in every lesson and making it a part of their normal life, it means that they build their own moral compasses rather than having us dictate what they think is right and wrong. It's basically just learning on respect and being able to understand people's feelings and um, learning, uh, learning how to solve a situation in, in a positive way, not negative. It teaches you about morals and values. So it does, it helps you to be an, a good person later on in life. It feels like we are, like we are changing, like we're changing our society, like starting by our school and then like growing bigger. Ethical education uh, is very much, I suppose, about creating critical thinkers. So young people who are capable of making their own decisions, uh, capable of doing the right thing, even when nobody is watching it, as we say. It makes you feel so much more empowered. It's a really good subject and I think every school should have it. Educate Together is special or different from other schools because the focus is entirely on the students themselves. So they've got um, Rather than having an idea that focuses just on teaching and learning, it's actually about making students the better people by the end of it. And something that the Educate Together schools do a bit differently as well is that they have student representatives on their board of management. So that means that the students' voices are also represented at the board level, which is something that's very important and leads back into the democratic aspect. They really encourage us to, you know, stand up for what we think is right and know our human rights and responsibilities. The opportunities and the skills and the knowledge that they gain as an active citizen in their uh, teenage years hopefully would carry through to adulthood uh, and that they can see the power of activism um, from an early age that they will engage with the local community. It's an approach to education that empowers young people to be active citizens. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to thank all the uh, parents and teachers from our Educate Together Secondary Schools who took part in that video. Uh, so welcome to our online public meeting uh, and thank you very much for joining us this evening. We're delighted to have you here. So this is an interactive meeting and if you look down and depending on what platform you're using, if it's an iPad or a laptop, it may be a little bit different, but there should be a Q&A button. So if you press that, you'll be able to interact and ask questions. Um, one of my colleagues, Jennifer Putner, will be uh, moderating that as we go along, so she'll be answering your questions as you put them in. Just bear in mind that if you ask a question now, that it may be answered uh, later on uh, during the meeting. Uh, we'll try and introduce some of the questions, maybe after following, following our speakers, and we, if there's relevant questions, we, we'll try to, to, to bring them in then as well. Uh, we'll have a short question, or we'll have a session at the end as well, where uh, we, we will try and answer 
those questions which we haven't managed to answer during the meeting. Uh, so this meeting will be is being recorded. Uh, and just to clarify, it's just the speakers and the presenters who are being recorded here. Uh, your participation uh, will not be recorded in any way. Uh, we hope to publish the, the video tomorrow uh, on our web page and also on our social media sites as well. Um, so please note that your written questions will not be publicly visible as well. OK, so we're encouraging to get involved in the interactive chat. OK, so thank you. So just uh, some key points from, from the meeting this evening. Obviously, um, we would like you to vote for Educate Together as patron. Uh, so the first link there, the bit.ly vote educate vote ET Gori 2021. Click on that link, it'll take you straight into the Department of Education patronage website. And uh, please remember that voting does end at 9 a.m. on Monday, the 16th of November. And we want you to make your voice heard. It's very important. Uh, so please spread the word and every vote will count in, in this um, in this process. So just going to talk to you a little bit about what Educate Together is. Uh, so the first Educate Together school, primary school opened in Dawkey in 1978. And since 2014, we've been opening second level schools as well. So at present, we've 95 primary schools, including one uh, Gori Educate Together National School, which some of you may be familiar with. Uh, we have 19 secondary schools and 20,000 plus students. So to break us down at second level a little bit more, uh, we're a patron of 15 voluntary secondary schools. Uh, and just to clarify, it's a voluntary secondary school we're, we're, we're hoping to open uh, next year. And th the management of a voluntary secondary school is very similar to the management in the primary school, which you may be familiar with. Okay. Uh, we're also a joint patron of two community schools. Uh, we're a trustee partner in two community colleges. And there's also a further two community colleges in transition at the moment. Uh, Educate Together is applying for patronage of two uh, new post primary schools for next year uh, Buddhistown, Black Rock, and Dunleary, and Goring County, Wexford. So, as a patron of primary and secondary schools, uh, all our schools are equality based, co educational, student centered, democratically run, and we have an ethical education program that runs throughout the school. Uh, I think uh, Colin will probably uh, talk to us a little bit about the edu ethical education problem later on. So, uh, and so I'll just deal with the, the with the other headings here. So, equality based. So, when we talk about equality based, uh, we're we're obviously talking about children being free to be equal in school. But uh, as well as that, we're also talking about outcomes as well. So, not every child is equal. Some child needs special uh, sp special help in school. So what we're talking about when we say equality based is making sure that when a child or a student reaches the end of his or her education, that they've done as best that they can and they're prepared to enter college or the workplace uh, uh, to, to their abilities. Uh, Co-educational, obviously it's boys and girls being, uh, being educated together. That was a very important um, uh, principle when the first uh, school opened in Dorothy in 1978, as most schools weren't co-educational. So uh, today, when we talk about schools being co-educational, we talk about boys and girls doing exactly the same things. Um, there's no activity in a school that a boy or a girl can't take part in, and that inclusiveness is very important. Um, we're also student-centered. That means that everything that happens in the school, uh, whether it's a board of management meeting or any type of activity, extra activity in the school, uh, is student-centered. And every decision that's made, uh, has a student at the centre of that. Uh, our schools are democratically run. Uh, they're, they're established basically for, from the demand of parents with a parent-led organisation. Um, and we encourage parents to get involved in, in all schools activities and school management as well. Uh, and this campaign to, to open this school next year is being led by, camp, by, by parents. And we'll be talking to one of them, as I said, later on. So uh, I might just at this stage just pause for a moment and maybe introduce Colm. So Colm is principal of Wicklow Educate Together Secondary School. Uh, Wicklow Educate Together Secondary School is a brand new school uh, which opened last year. And um, so Colm is going to tell us a little bit about establishing the school and what's going on in the school at the moment. OK, so uh, hello, everyone. Can can you hear me? You can. Hello. Yeah, you can hear me. OK, 
So uh, just to say, first of all, good evening. And, you know, I'm very happy to be here to talk about Educate Together this evening. And I would say that it's definitely a really exciting time for any town when a new school is arriving and a huge decision, really. So uh, my, my role here this evening would be to present the case for thinking about an Educate Together secondary school. And I think it's a, it's a very strong case, actually. I mean, I would say as a general point before I move into specifics that the distinction you have between Educate Together and other new schools that are, are probably looking to get started as well is that you're not only getting a new school, but you're getting a whole movement of new schools, which has basically sprung up in the last few years with a completely fresh approach. They're questioning every single assumption and they're energizing communities wherever they arrive. So it's a very like exciting development in Irish education, I think. And Gorey has a chance to to uh, bring an Educate Together secondary school now to the town. So just to to talk a little bit about the curriculum uh, for the schools. I mean, the way secondary schools work is you'll see pretty much the same curriculum in all schools in terms of core subjects. You know, you'll have your English, your Irish, your maths, your science, your language, PE, CSPE, SPHE. So you have a, a core block of subjects that all schools will do. And, uh, you know, also most schools, I think, will have interesting options as well. So, you know, in, in terms of Educate Together schools, you'll see all of those there as well, like home economics, art, technical graphics, etc. But I think where you, you see two big differences in terms of, of curriculum in Educate Together schools is one in terms of how they manage short courses. I think they really push out uh, with the short courses. Like, for example, in our school, we have philosophy, linguistics, debating, dancing, and then Pegasus, which is a subject that's that's linked to um, to learning across the curriculum where students choose their own projects and work on those. So that's um, a very, I think, huge difference between Educate Together schools and other schools that there's a much bigger imagination involved in the short courses that are being delivered. And then the second big difference, I think, is in the delivery that Educate Together schools are very, very much about the process and how it's done and the students being partners in that learning process. So, you know, teachers and students talk about the best way for the students to learn. So we're thinking a lot about methodology, more than any school I've ever worked in before. Educate Together schools think about uh, methodology. So I think that's that's all very, you know, strong selling points for, for Educate Together. And another one that I think is the ethical education course as well, which is really focusing on that idea of creating the good citizen, but locally, nationally, globally, you know, a big focus on the sustainable goals and a big debating culture that comes around all of these issues and you know thinking about like the, the sort of world and making it a better world uh, you know these are big things for educate together uh, schools and you'll often find them being very passionate about but very um, important topics of the day so the other thing I would sort of like to move on to now is to talk about the student-centered aspect of it and I think you hear a lot of schools saying the student-centered it's sort of a popular thing to say now now I think, but like, uh, you know, if you, in my view, Educate Together gets it sort of uh, for real much more than other schools have achieved because, you know, and even I, I guess like the whole idea of the first names is really a commitment from staff to the equality. I mean, we're not just saying it's going to be an equal environment. We're actually showing our own commitment to that, you know, and uh, everything is built upon the respect that comes from people working together as a community. So uh, I think, um, You'll see it again with the way students get representation. Like in our school, they're on every single board and committee, all the way up to the board and management. And of course, it's all age appropriate uh, connections as well. But, you know, this is really like teaching them that their voice matters. And we find very engaging uh, conversations about uh, different ideas they have to improve the school help us, you know. So, so I think it's a very uh, key feature of Educate Together schools that's quite unique and uh, it's a big selling point for them. You know, like, uh, for example, in our school, we have an election for everybody votes for the president. You know, everyone gets a vote. And the reason for that is so that they can learn about campaigning, learn about evaluating the different policies and the promises that are made. You know, look, looking at the importance of a vote, what a spoil vote means, you know, all of those things that sort of give them a real life learning experience about uh, democracy at work, you can say, and how they they can make a difference. And also getting to understand whether people deliver on their promises as they watch uh, what happens in the following year. So we, you know, we, we have an advisory board of studies as well, where teachers and students actually sit together and talk about the types of learning experiences that happened in the school, what's being enjoyed the most, what could be better, 
and we have this very open atmosphere where we're all trying to improve. So I think that's another thing that's a big selling point for Educate Together schools that you know we really do focus on the student voice and learning from that and seeing that as an important factor in how we approach planning. And uh, another point, I think that's a, an important point to say is um, that Educate Together schools look outwards. I mean, you'll see the influence of many different countries in the styles of learning that happen in Educate Together schools. I mean, we use the, the flipped class, which is a US idea. We use the phenomenon based learning with the subject Pegasus I was talking to you about earlier, and that's a Finnish idea. You know, um, last year I was over at the BET conference in the UK to see what they could bring us in terms of ideas about how to develop our technology. We are signed up with think tanks such as the Teacher Times. And, uh, you know, all the time, like what we're trying to do is look outwards and think about the best methodology that we can bring back to the school to improve the learning. So I think, um, you know, when parents sometimes ask me how students will do academically in an Educate Together school, I, I think, you know, it's going to be a very, very great place to achieve more because, you know, if you look at the way the junior cert is now, the CBAs are becoming very important. The whole idea of process is becoming very important. There is no better school than Educate Together schools for this because they were doing it long before these uh, reforms came into place. So they're perfectly poised to uh, bring students, I think, forward uh, at this moment in time. Uh, you know, the, I think you're going to see education is moving towards the Educate Together model, both at Junior Cert, it is happening now, and at Leaving Cert, I think it will happen. So, um, you know, that that's part of, again, another thing that probably I think is a really great thing is the progressive attitude to technology. I remember just after I was appointed principal, I met a group of parents and there were a lot of questions about iPads and whether they were a good idea or not. And to be honest, at that time, I had never worked in a school with iPads. So I was speaking hypothetically, really. But I can tell you by the end of, of my first year there, there wasn't one person questioning the wisdom of iPads. Now, we didn't think uh, it would have that much of an impact so quickly. But when the COVID closure came, we were perfectly poised for that. And we were able to continue live classes online, like, you know, proper school all day long during that closure. So you know, that's that's something that really, really stood to us. Now, of course, we approach it in a blended way. I mean, we don't have them on screen all day long, but I mean, uh, I think the attitude to embracing technology and to thinking how you know the future jobs and the future way society is going to be uh, is a real strong selling point for Educate Together. So uh, tomorrow, for example, actually, we're having an online training day now for all our new first years and new teaching uh, staff members and uh, everyone's been trained up for that so you know we'll run a full day of class a full day of school uh, at home tomorrow just to make sure we're ready if there's any closures in january so that we will continue school so it's not going to stop no matter what happens and you know that's i don't think there's too many schools that could be in that type of shape so educate together uh, schools are very very forward thinking and how they approach these things and then uh, in terms of innovation i mean that's really what educate together schools are about you know like one big innovation for ourselves was model united nations we, we set up a conference for the whole country, actually. And, uh, you know, then found myself and a few of staff members were training staff members from all the schools in Wicklow Town and also from schools much further afield than that. And then, of course, just when the conference time was coming, unfortunately, we had to cancel it because of the COVID thing. But we have an online model developed for, for next year. And, uh, you know, like we respond to what the challenges are and we want to be leaders. I think that's that's the, the big thing about Educate Together schools is they want to be leaders you know they, they want to really make a difference and uh, you're going to get that type of energy into gory if you if you vote for an educate together school so i hope i've given you plenty of food for thought there and i'll hand it back at this stage to to the presenter i listen colin listen thanks very much that was very informative just a couple of questions are after coming in so if you just stay out just don't mute yourself just for a second so just just one question as a new school have you had to offer less subject or subject choices or sports and how do you get around the limited facilities? I know you're in temporary accommodation prefabs at the moment. Yeah, OK, so I'll take the, the first question there. You know, we haven't we, we've actually offered a really, really broad curriculum because I think as a new school, you'll get uh, curricular concessions the first thing. And uh, I think really the key, though, and it would be the same, I think, for any school is to get very, uh, you know, uh, as many subjects as you can covered by the staff that you recruit. But I think uh, Educate Together are well known for having extremely innovative staff. I mean, we're very much targeting that type of person. So uh, it's, it's uh, you know, I'd say like most staff members be prepared to teach a, a good few subjects and maybe, um, 
you know, when you put all of that together, you, you actually have a very, very impressive package for a first year of a school, you know, and uh, it builds on that then every year going forward. And what was the second part, if you can remind me again, please? Sorry, I think you're on mute there. Uh, so, so, uh, so it's limited subject choices and sports and being in temporary accommodation and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I, I think um, the attempt, the temporary accommodation, like it's, uh, you know, I, I think everybody sort of likes good facilities. There's no doubt about that. But the truth is, you know, uh, the temporary accommodation inside is actually really wonderful facilities. Some of the best classrooms I've ever seen, to be honest with you. And the fact that we started off with around 40 students meant that we were too small in terms of the number of groups for the big temporary accommodation that have been provided. So that hasn't been a problem this year, even with now we've moved up to four classes with two first year classes, two second year classes, and it's still very, very comfortable there. So it's not a big, as big a problem as it may sound. And I think that the philosophy behind it is really in the first few years, this is what's going to happen in a school until they get a sort of you know, large enough group to justify the sort of moving into a, a very big school. So it's a very normal part of the process. I mean, where, where you're going to have a problem sometimes is maybe a missing facility. So, for example, we didn't have a PE uh, provision. So what happened with that was the department agreed to rent one for us and bus us there on a big bus with social distancing now this year with the groups. So we're able to outreach like that and then we're able to outreach, you know, other ways into the community as well. So I think that's where a little bit your innovation is going to be needed in the first couple of years of the school. But, uh, you know, I think it's a big adventure. It's a new school, it's a big adventure. And I think everybody who uh, joins a new school is a bit of an adventurer as well. And, and it's a nice small group and it's uh, it works together, you know. I think the temporary accommodation issue is the same for, for all patrons anyway. We're all dealing with that. And a lot, it's a, a lot of our schools are in temporary accommodation. But just, just one more final question if I can. So in Educate Together Schools, everyone is called by their first name and there's no compulsory school uniform. And can you outline your experience of this like on a day to day basis and maybe explain why it is part of the Educate Together ethos? I know you've, you've taught abroad as well, so I don't know if you experienced that abroad, but maybe what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, I, I could say where I taught abroad, it was it was sort of like uh, lots of different countries in the same school. So it was like a bunch of mini schools within a big school and some of them had the Mr and Miss uh, style and others didn't. And the students had to sort of switch between, depending on what class they were in, they had to switch between one model and the other. Like that was the first time I saw it. But what I noticed was where you have the Mr. and Miss uh, angle there, you've got a much more formal style relationship, which is what that, I guess, that idea is is really promoting. And then where you had the the names, you had a sort of, I think, a more, a more relaxed and more, I, I don't know, a, a different type of working atmosphere anyway, you know, like that was based more on people working together and less on the, the concept of a, a hierarchical authoritarian type of view like uh, in educate together when we got there first like most of the staff were coming from backgrounds where they're called mr and miss and i think it probably took a few days for them to, to get used to it but uh it's something that really works well i think inside a school because you know it's every everybody we're there saying look it's going to be equality is going to be our key principle and uh, this gives us an opportunity to show that that's real uh, it's as normal now as you could imagine and uh, everybody is getting on and, you know, I think the teachers see uh, the students in a different way because of it, because they're not, you know, it's not a hierarchical type of way. And I think the students see the teachers more as facilitators and people there to help them. And uh, I think it's a very positive, it's actually a very positive atmosphere because of that. OK, Colin, listen, thanks very much. We're going to move on a little bit and you might come back to with a few questions later on. If, if you can stay around, it would be great. So, so okay. thanks very much. So we're going to move on a little bit. So we've a, we've a, a, a short video from Sarah, who's a student in Sandy Mount Park, educated at our secondary school. Hi, my name is Sarah, and I'm in third year at Sandy Mount Park, educate together secondary school. I joined um, the school in second year, so last year, and I've moved around quite a lot, so I've been to a few um, different schools and by far this is probably one of my favourite ones um, for many reasons. Uh, one reason would be that the school environment, the community is just
I feel like it's easier. Um, so kind, yeah. There's also um, the school values of the school. They're just displayed. The, they're just displayed um, really, really well. Um, every day you can see kindness, respect, creativity, hard work, and the teachers are always pushing us to do the best that we can um, when we're working. And they're always there to encourage us. And they're always they're just there. They know um, they're there to support you. And they know when something's wrong. And yeah, um, there's also the diversity of the school. The school is um, services diversity so well. We have so many weeks during the year that are dedicated to specific learning disabilities, mental health issues. Uh, we're in the middle of actually planning a stand up week for next week. And um, it just shows how supportive the school is of all these different things that it embraces diversity and it just helps students learn more about um, all these different disabilities and issues that are around the world and just help to embrace them more, which is why I just, this school is just um, really, really great. Yeah, thank you. Hi. Okay, thanks to Sarah for that video. Apologies, I think the sound may have gone a little bit at the start of that, um, but it will be up on, on the presentation tomorrow. So uh, thanks to Sarah for that. Uh, so we're going to the next to Joanna Grady. So jo Joanna is part of our parent-led campaign group. Okay, so uh, Joanna is a, is a parent of children who attend uh, Gory Educate Together National School. So, um, so I'll just introduce um, Joanne, and she's going to talk a little bit about her experience in Educate Together, uh, what our expectations might be around an Educate Together secondary school, and also tell us a little bit about the great work that the group is doing at the moment. Thanks, Jerry. And hi to everybody who's listening in at the moment. Um, I'm Joanne. And I'm a member of the parent group based in Gorey, campaigning for the Educate Together patronage for our new secondary school. And I think um, we all felt widespread relief and excitement um, when the third school for Gorey was finally sanctioned three weeks ago. And it's first and foremost reassuring to know that the secondary school places will now be available locally for all the children in our town. Um, we're very lucky to be serviced by two excellent and well-established schools, Gorey Community School and Crea College. Um, we feel that an Educate Together school would complement this current provision and reduce demand on the already oversubscribed schools in the town. So in terms of the campaign that we're running, uh, choice is at the heart of the campaign for Educate Together patronage. Um, Gory Community School patronage is shared by WWETB and the Loretto Sisters, and Crea College is under the patronage of WWETB. So for us, an Educate Together secondary school would really diversify this current offering, bringing a greater choice to more parents and students at the second level. By reducing demand on the places in our current schools, more students will have the opportunity to avail of their preferred secondary school place, um, whether that's in GCS or Crea College or a new Educate Together secondary school. Um, we would feel that by voting for Educate Together, you're not actually committing to taking a place in the new school, but you're supporting other parents in your community to have the choice of an education based on inclusive values, respect for difference, and a choice of and justice and equality for all. Um, children in these schools learn in a de democratic co-educational setting, uh, supporting each child to achieve their full potential and preparing them to become caring and active members of a diverse society. People who know Educate Together are really passionate about it. And this has been reflected in the growing popularity of our national school in Gorey, which has been operating at full capacity for a number of years. 
as a parent of four children currently attending this school, it would mean a lot for me for them to be able to continue under this patronage at second level. Fairness and equality are becoming cornerstones on which Irish society is built. And these values are fundamental to the education and experience delivered by Educate Together in their schools. And just finally, a word from our campaigners. We want to thank you all for your support so far. Um, we have just a few days left and we need to keep people voting. Our votes alone will not be enough. So we're relying on every parent who would like to see an Educate Together secondary school in Gorey become a reality. Reach out and spread the word. Pick up a phone and call a friend, chat to your neighbours or your colleagues and ask them to vote for Educate Together as their number one preference for patronage. Thanks very much and I'll pass you back to Jerry now. Okay, uh, John, thank you very much. And can I just say uh, it's been a, a huge pleasure to work with this fantastic group of parents over the past couple of weeks. Uh, it's been very difficult because of COVID to get our message out. Uh, normally we'll, we would be in shopping centres, meeting people outside schools, organising events, uh, and we just can't do it this time. So a huge thank you to Joanne and uh, there's too many people to mention. And I know that's a little bit of a, people always say that, but there are actually too many people to mention here. But Joanne, just before you go, if you can maybe just unmute yourself for a second. Uh, we just want to talk a little bit about um, the defined catchment or the school planning area, what, what will become the school uh, catchment area. And you, you're a little bit more familiar than I am with the map. So this is the map that the Department of Education have uh, produced in order to, so this is the area that they're actually surveying. And a little bit of background here. So the whole country is divided into planning areas. Uh, Gori is, is obviously in the Gori School planning area. So maybe if you could just maybe look at the at the limits of the boundaries, if you, if you could just maybe make a little bit of sense of the map for us. Um, so the northern boundary um, extends just south of our um, county boundary with Wicklow. So it doesn't include in the north Coolgraney and Ballyfad, but goes as far as Kylanir and an inch in the in the north, and then all the way down to the coast. Um, and then in the south, it kind of goes as far as Ballycanew and then into the west as far as Holly, Hollyfort and um, Ballyduff. You, it's, it's quite hard to tell from the map um, whether your specific area is going to be covered in it, but the easiest way to find out is to go onto the preferred patronage um, page on the Department of Education. And when you put in your air code, it will tell you whether or not you're within the catchment area and eligible to vote. Okay, that's great. Listen, thanks very much for just clarifying that. Okay, so so basically the department are surveying uh, parents and, uh, of students or prospective students who live in this school planning area. This school planning area will become the catchment area for the school. And as I said, that the boundaries are as um, as Joanne mentioned there. Just one other thing to mention: the department seem to be surveying children who uh, who will be attending or starting to attend secondary school in the next five years. So that would be 2021 up to 2025. So uh, so those children are now in primary school uh, between second and sixth class. So uh, that's the age group of, uh, of students or prospective students that the Department of Education are actually surveying. Now we've questioned this with the department before. And we haven't re never really got a, 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 a like a sufficient answer as to why they, they don't survey uh, younger children. Um, and when you go onto the, the department's website, it doesn't actually clarify that. It's only when you might try to try to enter details of a younger child that it actually tells you you can't do that. It's something that we have raised with the department before, and we will again. Um, but uh, so so that's just so just to bring it. So this is the the school planning area and the proposed school catchment area as well. Uh, so just to move on a little bit, I just want to mention the re recent ESRI report. Uh, that came out in the last week. It's available from, from www.esri.com, uh, sorry, .ie. And just to go through a little bit, just some of the, the, the interesting um, the interesting findings that, 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 that they have. So, uh, educate to get our second level schools have more student diversity, diversity on average than a typical Irish school. Um, educate to get our second level schools have a strong culture of respectful teacher-student relationships. 
um, a diverse range of beliefs and identities. And we encourage that and, and we, you know, we encourage students to express their, their own individual beliefs and their own individual cultural identities, uh, whatever they may be. And we've also got a diverse range of socioeconomic backgrounds. Uh, a large amount of students who express a strong, strong sense of belonging at school. And teaching practices were in strong alignment with progressive approaches in the new junior cycle. Now there's lots of other uh, findings in that report and I would encourage you all just to go and have a look and see for yourselves. Um, so just to move on a little bit, I just want to get back to why we're actually here tonight. So we're actually here to encourage you to vote for Educate Together, obviously. Uh, you can find the, the, the Department of Education's patronage website at that bit.ly link there. Uh, voting once again ends next Monday the 16th at 9 a.m. Uh, make your voice heard, obviously vote Educate Together, and please spread the word, every vote counts. Okay, so it's very important that you spread the word. Uh, it's word of mouth that really, um, that will raise the profile of, of this process. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about accommodation. So we're getting maybe towards the end of the meeting. I've got a few very important slides coming up. So if you please can just stay with us. Um, so regarding accommodation, so the Department of Education have announced, obviously the new school will open in 2021. There's actually a typo there, it should be 2021. Uh, so as of today, they have not announced the location of the permanent or temporary location of the school, okay? And this is usual if the site hasn't been formally acquired. Now I know there's lots of talk locally and there's people talking about a site here or a site there. Uh, we can't comment on anything like that. We, we know nothing. Uh, the Department of Education haven't announced it. So in order to give everybody factual information or a meeting, uh, we, we can't say anything really about the accommodation, which is unfortunate. Uh, the Department of Education will discuss the accommodation with the, with the patron when the patronage decision has been made. Okay, so as soon as the patronage decision has been made, uh, hopefully it will be educated together, then discussions around the temporary and permanent location and sites and accommodation arrangements for 2021 can be discussed. Uh, so any accommodation limitations in the first few years will be experienced by any patron appointed and any perceived issues around accommodation are not exclusive to educated together schools. There's an awful lot of new uh, post primary and primary schools operating in temporary accommodation at the moment. Uh, educate together is opening a lot of new schools, so our schools do 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 open a lot of time in temporary accommodation. But that's the same for all patron bodies as well. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about the admission. So once again, uh, if educate together is lucky enough to be awarded patronage. Um, this will be the basis of our uh, admissions policy. So according to the process we're engaged in Educate Together, as have the other patrons, have agreed to provide priority access to students who live in the defined school planning areas first, okay? So they will become our first priority category in the first year of operation. Uh, from the second year onwards, obviously we'll have siblings in the school, so siblings will be given first priority access from year two onwards. And if you just look at the little graphic on the left hand side, so uh, for the first year, we will be doing catchment stroke school planning area and then outside catchment. And then in future years, then it will be siblings first, catchment area second and outside catchment area third. In relation to siblings, when we mean siblings, we mean children who are actually in the school, not past pupils and, and not uh, children of past pupils or anything like that. And for this purpose, we would count adopted children, obviously, but also foster children as being siblings. OK, uh, once again, um, that will become more clear once once patronage is obviously decided and um, we, we will let, let you know about that when, when the time comes. So little, a proposed timeline. So once again, um, caveat with this of Educate Together is successful in an application. Um, what we will do is we will immediately inform parents that it's happened. So we do have a mailing list uh, we, uh, through the Educated Get Work website. We will we'll probably, probably uh, issue a press release. So if we're awarded patronage of the school, you'll, you'll know for, fairly soon after that has happened. Uh, we will immediately commence the admissions process and principal recruitment process. And this will take about four weeks. So what we will do is we will publish an admissions notice. Shortly after that, we will publish an admissions policy and then we'll run that, pro that, that process over about four weeks. So uh, we, we'll be accepting applications in a four-week period. Once that closes, we'll be off in places. Uh, we will also run the principal recruitment process in parallel to that as well. So an example would be 
if patronage was announced in mid-December, we'd probably run both processes over the Christmas break and we would be looking to interview for a principal around mid-January and we should be looking to offer places around that as well. But once again, about four weeks from the, the awarding of the patronage, we should be uh, fairly well advanced in both of them. Uh, we would also be looking to hold a new parent meeting. So obviously, um, we, we, we'll assume that we, we, we'll still have some COVID-19 restrictions, so it will probably be uh, something similar to this. Um, once again, if, if patronage is, is awarded December or early January, we will be looking to have that meeting in January, February. And we'd like to have that first meeting while the recruitment, or sorry, while the admissions process is taking place, just so that we can give people who may be interested in places the most up-to-date information that we can. Uh, teacher recruitment for teaching staff would, would probably begin around April or May, which would be quite normal, and we'd look to have that finalised probably around uh, June, uh, the end of June. And obviously, once the temporary accommodation has been uh, identified and notified to us, uh, we would work on preparing the accommodation uh, with the Department of Education and whoever else we, we would have to deal with. Okay, so that's our proposed timeline. Once again, it's dependent on Educate Together being awarded uh, patronage. Um, so we've just got a little small video here, and I might just, when this is over, I might just talk to you a little bit about the process. So this is just another little short, quick video. Hi, it's Conor McGorman here. But 15 years ago, I had the great pleasure of being involved in establishing the Gory Educator Primary School and our own kids went there. They're, they're long grown up now, but I have to say it was one of the real joys of my life to be involved in establishing that, that school community. And I'm a huge fan of the Educate Together model ever since. And um, this year now, as you know, there's an opportunity to vote to establish an Educate Together secondary school here in Gory, something that I personally would love to see happen and I'm very supportive of. A vote for an Educate Together school in Gorey is a vote for choice for all parents and students in Gorey. So a new Educate Together school will mean that more students will have the opportunity to, to get into their school of first choice, whether that's CREA, uh, whether it's GCS or even the new Educate Together secondary school. Um, so please do uh, vote to ensure that parents and children in Gorey have a choice to attend the school of their choosing. Voting Educate Together doesn't mean that you're committing to take a place in the new school, remember. Uh, instead, it means that you're voting for choice for all parents and for students. Uh, so please do get involved, uh, do vote, and let's make sure we get an Educate Together second, secondary school for Gory. Thanks a million. Okay, sorry. Thanks very much, Colin, for, for that. Um, just, we're going to move on to our question session at the moment, so I'm just going to touch base with with, with Jennifer. Uh, I see there's a there's a, a quote in or, or a message in uh, from Councillor Andrew Bulger, so it's not a question per se. Uh, I would just like to thank you for the presentation. I would like to welcome the new school, which will take a lot of stress off students and parents alike. I like the equality based education ethos and bring the children into the decision making process. Best of luck and please encourage those who have a vote to vote. Thank you. So that's from Councillor Andrew Bulger and we appreciate that. Uh, so just in terms of any outstanding questions we might have, Jennifer? Uh, no, Jerry, we've answered most of them. I suppose uh, a few that have come up, uh, sorry, something that has come up a few times is in relation to technology. So um, just, you know, if devices are compulsory, um, maybe uh, Colin might want to answer maybe just on that issue. But um, I've, I've kind of gone back and answered, but Colin might be able to explain in the day to day of, um, you know, I suppose how that works and how technology gets used. Um, he outlined some of it already, but maybe, you know, it could just enhance that a little bit because we had a few questions around technology particularly. Thanks, Colin. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I can speak for, for our particular school and uh, the iPads are a compulsory thing, uh, but uh, we give as much notice of that, you know, from the very start, people are aware of that. So they have a long time to get uh, to get the plan together. And uh, we organize a company, in our case, we're using CompUB, who coordinates it all and uh, sets up a shop where they can go in and visit at their own time, get up to a given deadline sometime in the summer before September and uh, you know, get everything organized like on the in terms of um like that that's a bit of an expense but you know that's for three years it's not just for first year it's for first year second year and third year and then besides that we're encouraging teachers really to 
develop their own courses. You know, you might have in the first year of a school, you might have some teachers using ebooks, and uh, you know that would be something that um, a school can add on to that. You know, to the iPads. But uh, I think you'll probably find in your second year that most teachers are moving into creating their own courses. And there's a lot of teachers across the, the movement now at this stage that can share resources with the new teachers in Gori as well. So I think you'll see that, you know, that's the way we're happening. You know, the pay, the sort of good point for, for parents is that you're not paying money on textbooks so you, and you're not going to have your children carrying big heavy bags around the place. Uh, the iPad is used, is really used, I think the biggest use we have for it is as a sort of like a source material. It's a calculator, it's an encyclopedia, it's a filmmaker, you know, it's it's so many different things and it's it's generating a lot of the group work that happens and it's generating a lot of, you know, research then before things happen as well that lead to further discussions and so on. So it's really blended into everything that's happening in the classroom and it's not being used as a computer as such, you know, so I, I wouldn't be worried about the screen time issue because of that blended approach. And in our school, we also have screen free break times as well, just to to uh, make sure that the social element uh, that we're working on developing that as well. So it works. It works really, really well. And it's sort of I think the really interesting thing about it is it's it's schools reaching into the world where, where that they the students inhabit and it's using things that they are good at to help them with their education. And of course, then we did have the additional payback with, with the way we were able to use, uh, you know, the iPads during the closure and all of that, which we weren't expecting, to be honest, at the start of the year. But, uh, you know, I think myself that um, if you have faith in it, you're going to find it's an absolutely wonderful and brilliant device to help learning. Okay, so thank you very much for that, Colin. Um, just one question, I'm just after seeing Flash and Boy, and I think I missed it earlier on, just around ASD provision and special classes, etc. So uh, just to let you know, I, I believe that the, our Gory Educated Together National School has uh, two ASD classes at the moment, so that would be uh, classes for children with autism. So um, absolutely, we welcome the establishment of ASD classes and, and we're very much into special, special education needs. Uh, I think very high proportion of our schools have um, ASD classes uh, and we welcome that. that. That would be part of our quality based ethos as well. Um, so um, the question of whether we would have an ASD class uh, in year one if you were in temporary accommodation, that would be something that we would have to discuss with the Department of Education uh, if we were, um, if accommodation was provided for it. Uh, it would also, we would also need to have a request from uh, the NCSE, which is the National Council for Special Education, schools can't just unilaterally open, open up special classes. Uh, but once again, what, once patronage is decided and if Educate Together uh, is awarded patronage, we will be engaging with the department on, on issues like that. So uh, the short answer to, to, to that question is, yes, absolutely, we, will, we would love to open uh, special classes, ASD classes. Um, and uh, so, so, uh, so that's the answer to that. Uh, so if we've sort of run out of questions, um, I think, uh, once again, we'll try and publish the questions that we've taken in so far. And um, so just want to move on maybe to, this is our last slide here. And once again, I just want to um, maybe uh, just remind everybody of why we're actually here tonight. Uh, we're here to try and convince you, obviously, to vote for Educate Together. Um, I might just talk a little bit about the process itself. So when you, when you go into the website, it's it's a fairly uh, user friendly website. Uh, it's very intuitive. You just click the button to go. You go in. Uh, what you will need before and I think Joanne mentioned this. You'll need two very important pieces of information. Uh, you need your air code, and that will decide. That will tell you then once you enter that whether you're you're in the, the school planning area or not. And the second piece of information you will need are your children's PPS numbers. It's very important that you have them as well. Uh, so obviously, as you move through to the website, you, you'll come to your voting page. Um, you'll recognise Educate Together because our logo will be there as well as our name. And we would ask you to vote uh, Educate Together number one and encourage uh, everybody you can to do so as well. So listen, it's been a pleasure uh, to come here this evening. Apologies for not being able to meet you in, in person. Um, these are a little bit in person for these type of meetings. Uh, we, we don't engage, or we, we're not able to engage with our audience the way we, we really like to. Okay, so once again, uh, make sure you vote before next Monday, the, the 16th at 9 a.m. Uh, spread the word, every vote counts, and good night.